This is a DIY soldering clock kit. They're available from AliExpress for around £2.50, but I thought this would make a neat little project for us to assemble today. So let's get started. Okay, so inside the bag we have a PCB, single-sided PCB, but with some nice silk screen to show us where to put all of the components. And there's the backside as well. And that was wrapped up in this instruction leaflet. As usual, I can't read what's going on here. There is a schematic diagram though, so that might be useful. It says the clock runs from six to 12 volts DC. And here's the PCB layout and list of components. Okay, so these are the display units and they'll go up this way. We have some resistors. And this is the main chip, and that looks like an Atmel microcontroller. We have a battery holder with another stray capacitor hiding out inside. A few more resistors. There's a few diodes. There's a crystal oscillator, and this one is at 12 megahertz. There's a few LEDs we've seen, so let's just put these to one side. We have some terminals here to allow us to connect power, I assume. A push button, a few capacitors in different values by the looks of it. We also have some transistors here, and I hope these are all the same type because um, otherwise that could get confusing. I don't know if you can see that, but I think it says 8550. There should be um, six S8550s just here. So there's six of those. So those are the 8550 transistors. And this is actually a voltage regulator. So if we look here, hopefully you can see that this is actually um, 78L05. So let's take a little look at the PCB. I'm gonna start with the diodes here because they tend to be the smallest components um, on boards like this. And I think all the diodes are the same variety. So let's pop these in. And the black band should go towards the band on the PCB. Okay, soldering iron has warmed up. Okay, so next there's eight 470 resistors here. And that will be these. That will be yellow, purple, black, black with a tolerance band of brown. Then we have some 4.7K resistors, and we have six of these. So these will be yellow, purple, black, and brown, which will give us 4.7. Again, we'll just apply the blue tack to hold these in place. Okay, what should we do next? Well, this clock crystal seems to be um, quite quite flat. As I said, it's 12 megahertz and it's labeled here T1 for 12 megahertz. I've missed a couple of resistors. There's two 10K resistors here. And these are brown, black, red, which is the 10K. And again, it really doesn't matter what order you put the components in the board. Of course, there's no power going to it right now. And there shouldn't be while you are affecting assembly or repairs on a board. But it is convention here to install the lower level components, the lowest height components first. Just because as you start building up 
uh, higher and taller components, then it's just a little bit more difficult to solder them in place without them falling out. Um, I think I'm going to do some of these capacitors now. And so we have these 30 picofarad capacitors, and these will almost certainly be marked 30. We can try with the magnifying glass, hopefully you can see that now. Yes, 30. Okay. And we can see it here, 104. So for the rest of the power supply, we have some other capacitors here, some electrolytics, uh, three 10 microfarads, which are hanging out over here. What should we do next though? Could put in a switch potentially, goes over here. And so with the switches, it is important to note the orientation. So switches are connected through in this direction. And you can see on the back of the PCB, these are connected through here as well. We can actually verify that. So here again, if I just take my multimeter and put it into sounding mode, hopefully you can hear the kind of quiet beep there. And we should be able to see from these top two or bottom two legs that they're connected all the time. And there you go, those bottom two legs are connected those top two as well. In the other direction, we don't have any connectivity until we press the switch. So let's make sure we have identified our voltage regulator and we might put that one in first. A 78L05. Okay, and then let's go ahead and put in all of our transistors. Interesting, it looks like there's a link wire or two around here as well that we're going to need to insert. Let's make sure these are reasonably straight. They look okay to me. And these will be the drive transistors for the individual digits. So I'm gonna do those link wires that I mentioned. And so we'll just use some discarded leads for that. Okay, I think it's time for these diodes as well, actually. So they're marked incredibly small on the PCB here. So if I just show you here, they do have very tiny markings showing a positive end and the direction of the LED, but very tiny. So let's put these in. So as normal, the longer leg is positive and they are marked. I'm actually going to do the socket next. So make sure the indentation on the socket matches the marking on the board. Let's put the capacitors in next. So capacitors are marked with the negative sign. The negative is the hashed area and there's a tiny little plus sign on the board as well. And again, longer lead is positive. And these are all our 10 microfarad. And then this one should be a 220 microfarad. And that's actually quite clear, right? That's a nice big capacitor. Let's put in this battery contact here. Make sure that's all the way through so that the battery will sit flat. Plenty of solder on those pads as they are mechanical as well as electrical. So we only have the connector here and the LED displays. I'm gonna put the LEDs in next. Okay, the last thing to install is this connector here. Again, I've put plenty of solder on that just because of the screw terminals there. Make sure we've got a good solid mechanical connection. 
So I need to, need to grab a battery and I'm gonna grab some wire as well that we can put in here to power the clock. Okay, so I've got some black and red wire and I've got a button cell which I've pre-cut the package on just so we can get it out of this otherwise child-proof packaging. Now on the wire, I just need a couple of pieces just to connect up to my uh, power supply. So we've got our red and black wire in here. The last thing to do, of course, is to pop the chip in. So as usual, I'm just gonna rock it very slightly just to straighten out the legs and make sure we get it in the right way around. So notch to match the notch in the socket. There we go, that slide in nice and smoothly. No bent pins. Now I think the instructions said we want six to 12 volts. Set our power supply to six volts. Hmm. And we seem to have some dodgy digits here. Is there any bad connections? Oh, there is a very bad connection just here. And that one's not particularly good either. So let's just touch up a couple of dodgy solder connections. And there we go. That's all the problem was. Just a little bit of bad soldering on my part. And there we go. So we can actually try and set the clock, I guess, by holding down this button. It seems to be something around the amount of time you hold down the press, but... Um, Oh, that's actually very tedious. But I think you get the idea there. So this clock uh, does appear to be working and it should keep reasonable time, assuming it's using the, um, the clock crystal here. Um, probably not precise. Usually there's a separate 32.768 kilohertz clock crystal, which um, is used for timekeeping, even on microcontrollers. Um, I'm not sure if this is a dedicated clock chip or if it's a microcontroller, but I think it's a regular microcontroller. So there we have it. Um, I hope you thought this project was as interesting as I did, and I hope to see you in the next video.